Hi, everyone. Welcome to today's episode of the La Ivana podcast. I'm your host, Ivana Skoric, and today I'll share with you my experience having a need motivation in human design. So there are six different motivations, fear, hope, desire, need, guilt, and innocence. And every motivation has its opposite transferred motivation. And when I first learned about my motivation in human design and my transferred motivation, it made so much sense. I was like, yes, this is me 100%. And in this episode, I'll share with you my experience with need motivation and transferred fear motivation more than teaching you what's what. So for me, having a need motivation means being really focused on non-negotiables, asking myself, what do I really need to do? Instead of thinking of what I could do, what I could add, And this shows in every area of my life. So, for example, when it comes to my physical possessions, I am a minimalist and I was a minimalist even before I learned about human design. And I declutter my things with such ease because I'm always like, do I really need this? And if not, then out it goes. And maybe this is also my defined spleen and me not hanging on to things or people that just aren't a good fit anymore. So it's more of this approach, do I really need this? Instead of when it comes to physical possessions, does this item spark joy, which is more of Marie Kondo method, for example, if you're familiar with that. And also when I'm at a grocery store, I'm always like, do I really need this? And it comes easily and naturally. And that is like a dominant question in my life, do I need this? And what do I really need? And when it comes to business as well, when you go to my website, laivana.com, you will see it's such a simple website. You have a menu with main things, categories, my current offers, and that's it. So I would explain need motivation with keywords like simplicity, foundation, instead of getting lost in details. It's all about foundation and simplicity, and it's objective, like, what is really needed here? What gets the job done? And when it comes to business, I know that some people have sales pages that you can scroll through for two hours. It's just, it goes on and on. And for me, I'm like, what does the person reading this need to know? And when it comes a lot of business advice online, I don't follow the majority of business advice because I'm like, it's just not necessary. And I don't even like it. For example, in email marketing, it is recommended to have an email sequence with seven or 10 emails that are sent out every other day. And I am first to unsubscribe when I notice that generic email automation sequence after the first email. So if you sometimes download someone's freebie, maybe you noticed it. The majority of people have this sequence. So one day you get that freebie that you signed up for. The next day you get another email. Two days later you get another email. And it's that generic automation that's sent out to everyone. Instead of having intentional email like I have to share something, So I'm going to send out an email to my email list. It's more generic, automated for everyone. And also when it comes to my podcast, in the show notes, the question that I ask myself is, what does the listener need to know before listening to this episode? And I just write a few lines about what I cover in the episode and that's it. And I know that a lot of people have like five paragraphs in the show notes And personally, I'm like, that's not essential. So we're not doing that. And I love simplicity. And this is not like my approach is right. You need to keep it simple. And what other people are doing is wrong. That is not it. It's just that we are all different. And in today's episode, I'm sharing my experience having need motivation and how it's focused on foundation, being simple. What do we need? What do I need? And also when I launched my podcast, And when I launched my blog, I uploaded one episode and that's it. I launched it. Or I wrote one blog post and I launched my blog. 
and you will see a lot of people online, at least I see it in the Facebook groups that I'm a part of, a lot of people are asking, how many episodes did you have prepared before launching? And that can be a question from someone who is need motivation, but gets lost in their fear transferred motivation. And it's this fear that what you're doing is not enough. So you need to add more. And maybe naturally, you're like, I need one episode and that's done. And later I'm going to talk a bit more about fear transferred motivation and how it can show up in our lives. And also I noticed another coach who has a short to the point sales page and her podcast episodes are always less than 10 minutes long, minimal descriptions. She's always saying, I think her motto is focus on what gets the job done. And I'm sure she's also need motivation because that's the exact approach of people with need motivation. That's our focus. What gets the job done? What do I need to do? What needs to be done? And also when I'm creating an action plan for something, I'm asking myself, what are the main steps that are going to guarantee results? What do I need to do? There are no long to-do lists and maybe I could do this, maybe I could add this. No, when it comes to need motivation the way that I experience it, and this comes naturally to me, I'm not trying to be more of a need motivation. I have need motivation already. And this is just how it shows up in my life and asking myself, is this necessary? What do I think is important right now? And the need motivation is more focused on the present moment. So it's what do we need right now? What do I need to do right now? So that's how I experience need motivation. It is very simple. It is foundations, it is objective, I would say, because it is like what is needed right now. So when you have need motivation, you can get lost in fear motivation. As I've said in the beginning, every motivation has its transferred motivation. And for need motivation, its transferred motivation is fear. So because need motivation is so simple, there can be this fear of, what if this is not enough? So when you are writing a sales page, for example, when I would write my sales page for something, I would sometimes think to myself, what if this is not enough? What if I need to add more information? And when you are maybe launching your podcast, maybe you can think to yourself, yeah, I have one episode ready, but what if that's not enough? What if people need more episodes so that they can binge on my podcast? Or maybe when you are buying food, you buy three apples because you need it for the next three days and you're like, well, what if I need more? What if this happens and I will need more of this? So what happens then is that you're not trusting yourself. You're not trusting who you naturally are. You are naturally focused on what is it that you need. So then when you get lost in fear motivation, you can start with the comparison. You can look at how other people are doing things and then you think that you should add more. You think that you should do more. You should do more research. It's just not enough. And you start every sentence with, I should. I should be doing more. I should add this as well. And that's how you can notice that you are out of alignment that you are acting out of fear. When you start saying to yourself, I should, what if this is not enough? So when you notice yourself being like, what if this happens? What if this is not enough? Then you know that you're getting off track. And also thinking just in case. So for example, this happens a lot of times when you are packing for a trip, for example, Need motivation doesn't sound like, well, just in case, because you know what's necessary. You know what is it that you actually need. And once you get into just in case, what if scenario, you'll just end up frustrated, overwhelmed, worried. So that's how you can notice that you are in transference. When you start saying to yourself, what if this is not enough? What if this? What if that? I should do more of this. I should add this. 
I should research more, like nothing is enough. And for me, in my experience, learning more about my transferred motivation was so helpful to gain awareness on when I get lost in what's not serving me, when I get lost in what's not even mine. And human design is not something that you need to try to be. I don't need to be like, okay, this week I'll challenge myself to be in my correct motivation, in my need motivation. I'm going to set up a seven-day challenge. I'll try to stay in my need motivation. It's not something that you need to try to be. Human design helps you see yourself as who you truly are so that you can stop trying to be someone you're not. So when you have now this language and this awareness for me, when I learned that I am need motivation, I'm like, oh my God, yes, that is totally me. And you have that awareness. You can see yourself as who you truly are. And you can stop trying to be something you're not. I'm not meant to be in fear motivation. So when I notice myself being like, well, maybe I should add this to my website. Maybe I should add that. Maybe I should do more of this. What if this is not enough? I can take a step back and realize that I'm not operating the way that I'm meant to and that I'm actually just making things harder for myself. And we often get off track trying to be who we're not, thinking that who we are is not good enough. And if you are need motivation as well, sometimes maybe you're like, well, what if this is not good enough? So you get off track. And this is something for me that I apply to my daily life when I notice myself getting into what if I need more? What if I need to add more details? I know that I'm operating out of fear and that I'm doing things that are not serving me. And then I can easily get back into, wait, what's actually needed here? What's actually important? And then I can focus on that. So if you want to learn about yourself through the lens of human design, you can order your human design blueprint, or you can book a reading with me with the link in the show notes. And human design and the information that you read is going to help you understand yourself on a deeper level. And it's going to help you accept yourself so that you don't have to fight with yourself anymore. You don't have to be like, oh my God, why am I this way? And you can use what you learn about yourself to be who you are instead of trying to be someone that you're not. And human design language can be very confusing at first. For example, I am a manifesting generator, 2-4 profile, sacral authority, quad right, single definition, need motivation, artificial source environment. When you hear that at first, it can be like, what? I know English and that's not English. Like, I don't understand a word you just said. And when I first saw all of those things written next to my human design body graph, I was like, what the heck does all of this even mean? When I saw that I was sacral authority, I was like, what's authority? What's sacral? What's manifesting generator? What's 2-4? What's a single definition? It can be very confusing and maybe you're thinking to yourself like, what the heck does all of this even mean? So if you want to learn more about human design, if you want an explanation on your type, your strategy, your authority, your profile, your nine energy centers, defined, undefined, your definition, then I invite you to book your human design reading or order a human design blueprint. The link is in the show notes. And that is all I have for you today. Thank you so much for joining me in today's episode. I appreciate you. Have an amazing day, everyone. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye.